Hello and welcome to this Palm Sunday service at Covenant United Methodist Church. The palm fronds and leaves already decorate the carpet on our approach to this beautiful altar. Our Lenten candle already burns, and from its flame we prepare to light our altar candles, one for Palm Sunday and one for Good Friday. Let us pray. God of glory, God of love, help us to praise you today in all that we do and in all that we say. For Good Friday, we pray, God of mercy, forgive us. Break our hearts open, never to close again to the rest of the world. We're invited on a journey. Beyond Palm Sunday, we journey into Holy Week. And I invite you there to encounter Jesus' struggle, Jesus' death for love's sake, but beyond that, Jesus' resurrection and the triumph of light over all darkness. Will you go with us? Praise is rising, eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Welcome here, Lord Jesus. 
It's been a long time since I've done a children's sermon for you. And since it was or is Palm Sunday, I decided today is the perfect day to do a sermon. Remember this? Can you tell what I'm cutting out? I bet you most of you are figuring this out already, aren't you? Do you have it? It's a palm branch. So what happens on Palm Sunday? Remember, Palm Sunday is the day when Jesus comes into Jerusalem and people are realizing that this is the Christ coming into their midst. And they go and they grab palm branches off the trees and they wave them and they put their coats down on the roads and they say, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And they welcome him like none of us have ever been welcomed before. And they were excited. But we know the story, don't we? That excitement didn't stay. And what happened after that? It didn't take long. Within a week, the palm branches had changed. And in their place was a wooden cross. And we know the story of how Jesus was put on the cross and crucified in one week. Hallelujah. Hosanna. Blessed is he to putting Jesus on the cross. When I think about that, I can think of a lot of different things. But one thing I think about is, is the cycle. The cycle of excitement from Hosanna to the cross. And so often that happens in our lives too. Sometimes we feel like everything's going great and everything's going well. And then we have something that upsets and rocks our world. We could say that about COVID, how that has rocked all of our worlds. We could say that about, for my case, we get excited when kids are coming back into school and then they have to go out again. Our teachers are back in and then they have to go out again and children come in and go out again. All of us know. How crazy this year has been. But what comes after the Hosanna, what comes after the cross, after all of that is the resurrection. And as you go through life, as you go through the cycles of life, the ups of life, the downs of life, never get stuck down here in the down. The resurrection is always coming. Whether we're referring to the Christ or whether we're referring to your own life, the resurrection comes. We have ups, we have downs. And we go back up again. We're resurrected. We turn around and we come back. Don't listen to the world that say we have to be up here all the time. Life is about ups and downs. Life is about being resurrected. Use this time during Easter and during Holy Week to think about the ups of life, the downs of life, and how we pull ourselves back up and we keep going. It's all a part of life. Have a wonderful, wonderful Palm Sunday. Have a wonderful week leading up to Easter, and we'll see you next week. Remember, Parking Lot Church, be there. We've got a surprise. Thank you. Bye. Would you please pray with me? Lord, you choose to ride a humble donkey into Jerusalem. And in doing so, you ride a new message into the history of the world. It's that message that we want to understand this morning. Speak to us. Amen. If you're like me, you love a parade. And I'm sure you probably have fond recollections not only of parades that you've been a spectator at, 
but also fond recollections of participating in a parade. The first parade that I ever participated in was when I was a young student at Kersney College, a Methodist high school, boys high school in South Africa. A friend of mine's father owned an amusement park on the Durban beachfront. And at this amusement park, one of the uh, spectacular rides was uh, riding facsimiles of little miniature antique cars. And you would ride over beautiful bridges, giving you wonderful views of the ocean. But it was these little cars that we were going to ride in the parade. And I remember one particular time not being able to stop in time, and I rear-ended a beautiful Harley and was not popular. Another parade that I remember participating in was when I was appointed to be the pastor of the Presbyterian as well as the Lutheran churches in Wilbur, just up the road here on Highway 2. And my first responsibility was to ride in a parade with Bob Bandy in his huge, big red pickup truck as a way of being introduced to the community as one of the new pastors in town. Parades. Wonderful, festive times when people get together, usually characterized by joy and a sense of community spirits. But you know, in our gospel lesson today, there's a parade. And this parade has deep, deep implications. You know the story, but let's listen to it again as we hear Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find there tied a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied to a door outside in the street. And as they were untying it, some of the bystanders did say to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told him what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our, our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. A story that you and I know so well. A story about a parade. A few of us have been doing a Lenten devotional during the season of Lent, and the author of this particular devotional, which uses Mary Oliver's poetries as part of the study, has this to say as we meditate on Palm Sunday and its theme. Jesus was a skilled student and a faithful lover of Scripture. And here, in a kind of street theater, he enacts a passage from the ancient prophet Zechariah. The crowds fully participate in the performance, lavishing praise on the triumphant king, humble and riding on a donkey. And so the author is right. Jesus was an avid student uh, of Scripture, and he knew it, and not only knew it, but perhaps knew it very, very well. And he would have been familiar with the text in Zechariah. Zechariah describing how new things were happening. The Israelites had been brought back from exile in Mesopotamia, and so they were reestablishing themselves, rebuilding the temple. And this phrase here is used in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. But then it continues beyond verse 9, He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, 
and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. One of those portions of the Old Testament that speak of God, God speaks of God doing something new, something very loving, something not violence or violent or judgmental, but something which would turn conventional wisdom on its head. And Jesus graduated to this particular scripture. And knowing this scripture, perhaps the Christ was afoot within his own heart as <clears throat> Jesus' humanity began to meet his divinity. And we're all, met, we're all made in God's image. But as this happened in Jesus, so incarnation began to happen as well. The love which is God began to manifest in Jesus as the Christ made Christ's self known. And so Jesus, filled with the Spirit, so to speak, says to his disciples, go and find this ass. And he reenacts this particular scripture from Zechariah and the people around him probably would have known it as well. And they participated fully in this scripture that they knew occurred way back in the Old Testament when their people were struggling to reestablish themselves. Uh, and not only reestablish themselves, but following in verse 10, they knew that this God was talking about a peace that would last and endure. And so here comes Jesus riding on a donkey, just like in Zechariah, and they fully participate. And what was happening in there was something that was drawing something from deep down within them, a hunger perhaps, an aspiration for what Jesus was representing in riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. And so not only were the people in that particular parade realizing that something momentous was happening, but we know that part of that momentousness or part of the significance of what Jesus was doing is that he was turning conventional wisdom on its head. If the world believed that violence redeemed, the world would have sent somebody on a war horse to ride into Jerusalem. But here perhaps God in Christ Jesus is saying that violence does not redeem, but rather only humility, which leads sometimes to suffering love, is what will redeem a world quite gone mad by violence. On this Palm Sunday, Paddy and Rhonda will hang for us two cranes, people killed, mass shootings, both in Atlanta and in Boulder, Colorado, indiscriminate violence. And so we live in a society that counts on violence in a sense, depends on violence to save. And yet the message, the Christian message, beginning to be inaugurated by Jesus at this stage in his life is that no humility and humble love is what will redeem. And we know what awaits Jesus. What awaits Jesus is a forceful empire that relies on violence that will not allow any, any challenge to the wisdom that it lives by. And Jesus knows that he, as he goes to Jerusalem, it will cost him his life. But he goes anyway, prepared not to take up the sword, prepared even to forgive his enemies. And as death is conquered through his love, so the world is invited, you and I are invited to a new way, a new story, that leads to life for all people. This is not just any parade. This is the parade that promises life, redemption, salvation, not only to us individually or to our cities or to our nations, but to the entire world. It is the life that you and I are called to. Amen. Thank you.
Good morning. My name is Patty Osbold, and I am Rhonda Greco. Rhonda and I are part of the Peace and Prayer team. Martin Luther said, Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. On March 16th, 2021, Eight people were shot and killed in Atlanta, Georgia. Today, we make an origami peace crane to mourn and honor those killed. This red crane will be surrounded by white cranes of peace to show our love and prayers of peace for those killed as well as for their family and friends. We honor and pray for Delania Yoon, Hyun Jun Grant, Zhao Ji Tan, Soon Si Park, Yang Yui, Paul Andre Mitchells, Soon Cha Kim, Dao Yu Feng. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John 8, 12. On March 22, 2021, in Boulder, Colorado, a mass shooting occurred. Ten people were shot and killed. With this red crane, we pray for and remember them and their families and friends and mourn the loss of Denny Strong, Nevin Stanesic, Ricky Oles, Trelona Bartkowiak, Suzanne Fountain, Terry Liker, Boulder Police Officer Eric Talley, Kevin Mahoney, Lynn Murray, and Jody Waters. Let us turn to God in prayer. Lord, we all love a Mardi Gras. We all love participating in some fashion in parades, but all too often throughout our lives, the joys associated with those parades have been temporary. And yet this parade that Jesus invites us to participate in leads to a life that leads all the world to joy and to peace. And so during this season of Holy Week or this week, that is holy, we invite your spirit to move within our hearts. Help us to aspire after a union with you and your ways, knowing that in your ways lies a deep, deep joy that the world cannot give. And so allow us to walk with you, touch our hearts deeply, stir our souls, capture our imaginations all over again, of what is possible as we learn to live our lives in you. And so thank you that we journey not alone. We have friends, many of whom are part of our congregation here at Covenant. We pray for one another. For those who are ill, be with them, Lord. For those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, watch over them. Be their companion during this time of grief. We pray for the ministries that continue in spite of this COVID epidemic, celebrating that in spite of the darkness, we can be a part of being, bringing your light and your joy. So we pray for the world. May the parade of, of Palm Sunday lead to new things, new hearts, new minds, new governments, new ways of celebrating and caring for your creation. So hear our prayer in Christ's name we pray. Amen. I was with him 
When he rode into town And the crowds gathered round him like a king Their smiling faces Joined the sea of branches waving Though they were masquerading in the end And my heart froze in my throat When I heard them sing Hosanna In the highest Oh Upstairs, broke the bread and drank the wine from the only living vine that we would taste. And I watched them take him up the mountainside where he was crucified, though innocent. And they mocked him and cursed him with their mouths and told him to come down if he was God and my heart broke in my chest when I heard him say forgiven it is finished This does bring us to the end of our worship service, but before we go, a few announcements. First of all, I hope all of you have had an opportunity to learn the wonderful news uh, about the appointment of Covenant's new minister. Her name is Megan Madsen, and she will be transferring in as a current minister of the Nazarene Church. But all those who had the opportunity of meeting Megan were so impressed with her, her energy uh, and just her sense of presence. And so I hope that you will even now begin to keep her in your prayers uh, and prepare especially uh, to welcome her as you did Carla and I. 
Uh, I know that I was just thrilled when I heard about who she, who she is uh, and uh, how she promises to fit in so well uh, to the ministry here at Covenant United Methodist Church. A few other ministry opportunities. Uh, during the week of Holy Week, we would like to open up the sanctuary to uh, as many of you who might be interested just to enter this holy space, um, so beautifully adorned with the, the, uh, the symbols of this holy week, uh, especially the palm leaves and the suspended cross um, and the purple, purple uh, cloth. But if you and your family living together would like to come just as family units, to spend 15 minutes in the sanctuary, uh, Monday through Friday, just phone Kim um, and uh, she will let you know which time slots are available. Uh, we invite you to come to leave with a palm frond, also to have your own little candle, to place it on the altar, to light it uh, as a symbol of your desire to allow the light of Christ to burn within your own heart. So do encourage you to avail yourself of that opportunity. And then just know that our Easter celebration uh, next Sunday is going to be a celebration in our cars, in our parking lot, uh, much as we enjoyed as we celebrated Covenant's, uh, Covenant's uh, history uh, earlier on in the year. And so do join us for those opportunities. And as I'm fond of saying, uh, at the end of our worship service, now we are not just dismissed, we are not just free to go. Rather, we are sent in Christ's name to live, love, serve, and play in all we do. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen.